Hello, and welcome to the very first episode of your Bish Therapist podcast. My name is Melissa Reich, and I am your Bish Therapist. Today's podcast, I'm going to share with you a little bit of a history of who I am, uh, some of my credentials, um, giving you a answer to the question, why should I listen to your Bish Therapist podcast? Today, I'm going to tell you why. Uh, first, I'm going to start out by giving you a little bit of background on my credentials, sharing a little bit of the Your Bish Therapist podcast origin story. And today, I'm going to talk with you about some major, major things that are going on in the Bravo universe. Um, to be clear, I am going to cover things outside of Bravo as well. Uh, for me, your Bish Therapist, uh, I am very interested in a breadth of subjects, um, true crime, you know, mysteries, uh, you know, pop culture in general. So what I'm going to do today is break down a new story that's been in the Bravoverse. However, each episode is going to be a little bit different. Some of them may have something to do with Bravo and some of them may not. Um, also, to be clear, those of you who are listening to this right now, um, this is my podcast. However, I am also recording video. So you can find the full podcast video um, on YouTube. Uh, the channel is Your Bish Therapist. You can just search that and find me on YouTube. Um, the reason for both shows, essentially, is that I make a lot of really interesting facial expressions, and I liberally use my hands. I, When I talk, I gesture with my hands. That's just kind of how I am. I'm Italian, and this is just, this just is who I am. So for those of you who are just interested in the audio, great, no problem. If you'd also like to see a video, head over to YouTube, uh, Your Bish Therapist Podcast, and you'll be able to see me there. So let me start out by introducing myself. Again, my name is Melissa Reich. I am a real life therapist. Uh, what does that mean? I have my master's degree in clinical psychology from LaSalle University. I have a bachelor's degree in psychology from Penn State. And I am licensed in the state of Pennsylvania, which is where I live currently. Um, I am happy to have an episode where I talk about licensing and the whole process. You know, I've had a lot of uh, therapists reach out to me, which I really have loved. Um, so, you know, my goal is to essentially make this podcast whatever it is that you all want to hear. Um, for me, a big part of that is you know, feedback is very important. Um, so at the end of this podcast, I'm going to list some of my contact information, some ways to share some of your feedback. And, you know, maybe even I can take some questions and things like that. But I'll address that in a bit. So the first thing I want to share is um, with my history as a therapist, I have been in the field for about 17 years. I've worked in a lot of different milieus. I've worked in inpatient addiction treatment. I've worked in outpatient addiction treatment. I've worked with gambling addiction. I've been a gambling prevention specialist. Um, I've done some teaching. I've done private practice. So I really have run the gamut in my career of, you know, doing a lot of things, which has helped me gain a lot of clinical knowledge and perspective on a lot of different topics. Um, I'm also a hardcore Bravoholic since, you know, kind of day one. And I thought, you know, why not combine my two loves of therapy and clinical interpretation and reality TV? Because Lord knows there is a lot to interpret on reality TV, um, especially on Bravo. Lots to interpret. Um, my goal here is not to be rude or snarky. Uh, you know, my goal is to provide true information. Um, and if we can use something in 
the reality TV zeitgeist to help us. I think that, you know, that's my goal to, to how can I make something good out of this dumpster fire that we call reality TV? So that's where I come in. Now, that being said, uh, I am also human. I have a wickedly dark sense of humor. I have a big personality. And sometimes I may, you know, make some jokes or say some shady things. But, you know, that's just me being an imperfect human. Um, but the general goal is to use this as an outlet for learning and growth and support and awareness. Um, so the, the your Bish therapist name comes from uh, the wonderful and beautiful Amy Phillips. Amy Phillips, if you know you have not heard of her, she has an amazing podcast called Drama Darlings, uh, which is on Patreon. I highly recommend people check that out if you haven't already. Um, so Amy used to call herself your bitch wife, and that came from an episode of Real Housewives of New Jersey where Joe Judice says that about Teresa, his wife at the time. And, you know, being a therapist, I had DM'd Amy one day and I just joked that I was her bitch therapist. And so that's kind of how the name came to be. Now, what I'll say is uh, cursing isn't um, supported on a lot of platforms, especially in your name and your handle. So I just made it more user friendly. So I, I changed it to your Bish therapist. And uh, that is where the name comes from. And from that was born the idea of a YBT podcast. And, um, you know, side note here, I am a huge YMH fan. Um, people who are listening to this, if you don't know what I'm talking about, just ignore it. And if you do, please DM me on Instagram because I'm a huge YMH fan. And, um, you know, I just thought YBT was such a good abbreviation for your Bish therapist. So, uh, an homage to the great YMH studios. Um, here's what you can expect today. I'm going to discuss two things today. Today, we're going to talk about Bethany Frankel's, I'm not sure what to call it, her revolt against Bravo TV and reality TV in general, um, and Carol Radziwill. Now, the reason I'm going to discuss both of these issues is because um, for anyone who hasn't heard, <laughs> Bethany is starting a revolution. Um, she is calling Bravo specifically, Andy Cohen, Bravo as a whole, she's calling them to task, claiming Bravo exploits women specifically. And there's a whole lot of other accusations and claims, right? That there is, you know, inappropriate behavior going on behind the scenes, encouraging women to drink when they don't want to drink. Um, you know, a lot of information about um, personal misconduct. And I will tell you right now, you know, probably all of my episodes are going to have a trigger warning because um, while there's a group of people that think trigger warnings are somehow lame or stupid, um, as a therapist, being triggered is a very real experience and I don't take it lightly. So a lot of my podcasts are going to cover some some challenging topics. Um, for example, abuse, sexual abuse, uh, child abuse, things like that. Um, so for me, I just want everyone to know right out of the gate. You know, at any point, I will give you a warning before I, I start discussing those things. Um, but going back to Bethany, part of what she's alleging is you know sexual misconduct behind the scenes and not being handled properly by Bravo. Um, there's the whole Real Housewives Ultimate Girls trip brouhaha, which is, you know, Brandy did something to Caroline Manzo and, you know, HR had to get involved. And, you know, now we're not going to see Real Housewives Ultimate Girls trip. I don't think we're going to see it ever, um, but they say we'll see it next year. Um, you know, so I guess to be determined there. But 
We can't forget Bravo is, you know, a huge corporation. When Housewives started, um, it's nothing like it was now. You know, let's not forget the Real Housewives of Orange County. The first season was wonderful. It was sky tops and tennis and lunching and silliness. And, you know, now it's kind of turned into a different animal. So what I'm going to do for you is kind of break down what I'm hearing from Bethany. Um, Carol kind of forced herself into that mix, which is really interesting. So I'm going to comment on that. And, you know, and then at the end, I'm going to, um, I'll share a little bit about, um, you know, plans for the podcast, where you can find me, all that good stuff. So here, let me, let me say this first and foremost. I am a strong ally for all marginalized groups and communities. And in general, I'm just an advocate for human rights. Um, I, I, I need to say that first and foremost. So to me, Bravo exploiting women has is not news. That's their model. And, you know, I say that, you know, people will say, well, they get paid and, you know, they get a lot of benefits and gains and things like that. Well, well of course. But some of the things that Beth Bethany has brought to light has been you know, very eye opening. Um, and I understand people have a lot of different feelings about it, but from my perspective, let's take Bethany out of the out of it just for a second. If human rights are being trampled, then I am here for a revolution. I think that historically, revolutions come from people being mistreated, uh, marginalized groups and communities. And, you know, people have enough of it and then they, you know, they speak up and things change. And I think that that is really, really important. If the women who are signing up for these shows or, you know, the, the men and the families and, you know, you know, keeping in mind gender fluidity and all those things, although I don't think Bravo necessarily represents that, but that's a whole other story. Um, you know. From what I understand, people are signing their life away. Um, a, an important key term here is in perpetuity. So in perpetuity, what that means is it's a fancy way to say forever, you know, like old Sandlot forever. Okay. If you don't, if you're young, you may not get that reference, but Sandlot rules. Um, so these women are signing, you know, away the rights for their images to be used, even in AI. And, you know, that goes, speaks to a little bit of like the SAG-AFTRA, um, the current, you know, hubbub around that and, you know, the protesting and, and then and them holding, you know, movie studios and, and people accountable. Um, I'm here for all of it. I think that if people are being creative and using their qualities to create content, then that needs to be properly respected. Uh, people need to be paid properly and they need to be treated properly. And basic human rights are very important. Now, what people are frustrated about with Bethany is the fact that she tends to <laughs> be very contradictory. So what I saw today, you know, as I record this podcast, um, is that Bethany had pitched a show to Bravo a couple months before this revolution. And, you know, people are really up in arms about that, which I understand. You know, I think the thing of it is, is that let's not get lost in Bethany's stuff and forget what this is actually about. Um, I also find it interesting that, so Carol Radziwell, um, who for those of you who don't remember, she and Bethany were great friends on Roni and best friends. In fact, they traveled together. They, you know, spent summers together. They did all these things together. And then all of a sudden we see, um, 
the relationship deteriorate and everyone kind of wanted them to come back together. But at the end of the day, it just seemed like they were two fundamentally different people, which it always fascinated me. That dynamic always fascinated me. You know, we've all been friends with people that, you know, we kind of maybe take a step back from and say, hmm, what was this about for me? I don't know if this was healthy, etc. But nevertheless, they were friends. So I think for Carol now to come out and just completely try to destroy Bethany yet again in the media, you know, what does that say about her? Um, because again, I think that Carol is getting too swept up into the Bethany of it all. Like Bethany and the change that needs to happen aren't one entity. Yes, Bethany is leading the charge for sure, but she isn't the charge, if that makes sense. So let's, let's not get it twisted. Um, there have also been rumors that Bethany is, um, bringing Rachel Levis into the fold in her fight against, you know, Bravo. I've seen a lot of different um, articles about this and stories about this and, and things like that. And again, here's what I'll say. Rachel Levis, people may not like her, right? She did some really crappy stuff um, for sure. No doubt about it. But at this point, she's a human being who her demise was filmed and used for sensationalism, right? I mean, for entertainment. Um, everyone in the cast was. And, you know, I read something about she wanted to come back, but she wanted Bravo to cover the extensive cost of her mental health treatment, which, by the way, I will say that mental health treatment in this country, healthcare in general, is abysmal. Um, we all should have access to great health care that shouldn't cost us a fortune or our entire house or our lives or what have you. I think it's absolutely gross. Um, and if Bravo used her for their purposes, uh, I do believe they should have um, assisted with funding her, her mental health treatment. Um, so, you know, my concern here is that change is upon us and change can be a beautiful thing, but it also can be really scary. And I believe that Housewives as we know it is over. Um, this whole crusade is, if done right, the goal is to change the entire landscape of Bravo and reality TV. Um, what is that going to look like? None of us know. So while I'm here for it, I also understand, you know, the concerns. Um, I also think that Bethany, you know, can be contradictory and very confusing for a lot of people, myself included. But at the end of the day, you know, my stance is that if human rights are being trampled, then then we really need to to do a better job here. Um, going back to Carol for a second. So she went on Heather McDonald's Juicy Scoop podcast, and um, I am a proud Juicy Scooper, so I listened to that. I just couldn't help but feel that Carol's, her words were so reactive. You know, it still sounds like she's so angry at Bethany and, and upset. And, you know, all those things are fine. But to me, it undercuts a little bit of her message. It kind of just seems a little bit bullying, mean girl, you know, what have you. Um, Carol, you know, here's the funny thing about Carol. I always liked her on the show. I think she's smart. I think she's accomplished. I think she's a, you know, badass woman. You know, Bethany too. They both have similar characteristics, to be honest. But what I don't like is for people who don't have a good clinical understanding of 
some terms like toxic narcissist, you know, Carol was just really throwing out a, a lot of buzzwords, you know, gaslighter, toxic narcissist. Um, I'm trying to think of other things that she said. She was just really unkind. And here's the thing. I look at characteristics like narcissism on a continuum. Okay. So over here on, on the one side of the continuum is, you know, very little amount. And over here on the other side of the continuum is a really significant amount. Most people fall somewhere in the middle. This is personally just how I practice. I've heard a lot about toxic narcissism and covert and this and that. To me, that doesn't, that's a, a bunch of fancy worded ways to talk about this topic. The fact of the matter is, is that we all have narcissistic traits and qualities. All of us do, myself included. Um, it's just part of this thing we call being human. So everyone falls on the spectrum. And I think when people talk about these different types of narcissism or toxic narcissism, it just, it really, for me as a clinician, it's off-putting because it, it just seems like people are trying to use these buzzwords for clout. Um, and, you know, although I love um, Carol, I, you know, she's a writer, she's really smart. She's not a therapist. She's not a psychologist. She's not a psychiatrist. Um, so that is something that, you know, I just, I didn't love hearing. Um, you know, also Carol kind of called out Bethany for doing things that she also does or has done. Um, in fact, I don't know if anyone caught this, but there was one point in the interview where Carol said to, um, Heather, you know, just so you know, I'm the person who started this. It was some topic. I can't remember what it was, but she said, just so you know, I'm the, the, the Bravo housewife who brought this to light, but then immediately shaded Bethany for thinking that she's the one who introduces things to people. So it was just really contradictory. And, you know, I'll be clear too, as a clinician, you know, I love these housewives and I love these people, but I'm also human and I don't stand anybody. I don't, I think all humans are imperfect. And, um, these are, these people are just humans. They're famous humans, but they're just human beings. So I don't often stand a housewife and whether I like you or not, I'm, I'm going to call some stuff out. That's just, that's just how I roll. Um, so I would love to know your thoughts about this. Um, so this will lead me to my contact information, which is, um, and here's the thing I'm hesitant because I do not want this contact information to be abused. So what I will share is the contact information and then some disclaimers with it. So I, you can find me on Instagram at Yerbish Therapist. Um, I'm also on TikTok and YouTube your Bish therapist. Now, I have an email that I set up specifically for this podcast, yourbishtherapist at gmail.com. I am very interested in building community and I am so appreciative to the people who um, are supportive of me on Instagram and things like that. What I will say is that legally, I cannot provide any clinical help, feedback, or, you know, I, I can't practice. So I've had some DMs and some people reaching out to me for specific help. Legally, I cannot assist in that way, but I will always help people get to the resources that they need to resolve whatever issue that they're having. So keep in mind with the email, you know, I cannot answer um, personal, you know, questions or concerns, but generally, you know, anything else is on the table. Um, I'd love to hear what you would like me to cover. Um, you know, I'm open to, you know, I'm just open to seeing where this podcast goes. I'm very flexible and I'm very passionate and I'm very excited. So, um, sky's the limit, you know, for me. The other disclaimer that I want to share is that you know, and I'm going to share this at the top of all my podcasts, but I am a clinician 
who I am not treating these people as clients. I don't know them. I am assessing. I cannot properly assess them because I don't know them. They're not my client. But what I am doing is observing behaviors in the media and providing a clinical interpretation based on my observations and based on my history of working maybe with some people with similar issues. Um, so let's just keep that in mind. Um, the last thing that I will say as I wrap up episode one of my podcast is just thank you to those of you who are listening, um, to those of you who have really supported me. And for those of you who are new listeners and, you know, thank you. I appreciate you very, very much. Um, I am just a regular person who, you know, all I ever wanted to be was a therapist. And during the pandemic, um, I unfortunately uh, was dealing with cancer and I had to start undergoing treatment during the pandemic, which was a blood soap nightmare. But I, you know, had to take a step back from, from private practice. And it was really hard for me because this is all I ever wanted to do. And so for this opportunity to just kind of fall in my lap, I feel really grateful and excited. And, um, I'm just really grateful and thankful for everyone listening and for all the support. It just means the world to me. So for today, this is going to be the end of my podcast, but my plans are, um, I will be releasing one podcast a week. Um, for now, I think I'm going to do about 25 to 30 minutes, but if you guys want more, I'm happy to do more. I'm also happy to do it more frequently, but for now it'll be once a week and it'll be released every Tuesday. You heard it here first. So you can find your Bish Therapist podcast anywhere that you listen to podcasts, Spotify, Apple, Stitcher, um, you know, where, wherever you can find a podcast. I will also post about it um, on my Instagram account and have links. So if you're having trouble finding anything, you can head over to your Bish Therapist on Instagram and I will have everything posted for you there. So until next time, thank you so much. Take care.